Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the farm. So it's been a little while since I did a video. Things just got busy with work, things got busy with life, and I kind of backed off of, uh, on it, and I'm, I'm really sorry about that because I wanted to do a lot more content of showing, uh, growing out the, our first set of pigs and everything that it took to do that, and I just didn't keep up on it. And it's my goal here in 2024 to get back to the vlog and get back to, to posting at least once a week, if not move it up to twice a week, because I have learned so much on this farm. I mean, the stuff that I have learned blows my mind. I mean, there's so much stuff when you get into farming that you just don't quite understand. And you just kinda gotta figure it out as you go. And a lot of the YouTube channels that I've been watching have helped me a ton with learning what I need to do on the farm to make everything work. So in today's video, I just kind of want to catch you up on what has been happening. You know, we started the farm in 2023. So those of you that started watching in 2023, I really appreciate it. And it is now in uh, the beginning of 2024. And we have successfully raised our first set of pigs. We did six pigs and it could not have gone any better. And I want to tell you guys about it. I want to tell you the future plans of what we're doing and kind of where we're heading, what we're planning. So let's hang out for a little bit. Just got to check the wood stove real quick. So I got some wood from a buddy and it's not quite seasoned enough. So I'm having a really hard time keeping this thing going for the barn. Um, it basically has to get really hot in order for it to actually burn properly with this wood. So it's kind of annoying. You saw parts of the beginning of the farm. It is seriously, it's came so far. So let me flip you guys around. If you remember, I started doing the build on this chicken coop and it turned out really nice. I haven't really done a full video of this chicken coop yet. Um, I probably will in the future, but here is the run and here is our girl's home. It's kind of messy in here because these chickens usually have that door closed because otherwise they're in there causing a ruckus. Get out of there, would ya? Yeah, so right now it is winter time and we have the deep bedding method going on right now. Looks like we've got some good old butt nuggets down there. So we've got the deep bedding method going on. Looks like I need to add some more shavings in here. Um, but we have quite a bit built up because there's actually quite a bit of room under there and it's getting pretty full. So as soon as springtime hits, I'll get in here, we'll wipe this clean, get rid of all the shavings in here, put fresh in here. And I actually am going to need to make the coop bigger, which I designed it to be able to do. So we're gonna take all of this stuff out, move it. Um, I think I'm gonna try and find a new place for the hay for the goats because this is gonna end up being a brooder because we need more ladies. Our eggs have been doing so well in the community and everybody loves them. Huh, you guys are doing a good job. Now get out of my coop. So the ladies have been doing a really good job and I wanna do some more stuff with them this year because like for instance this is where they found to do their dust bath right next to my brand new barn and they're just digging underneath of it so i want to build them a dust bath this year and do some more stuff to this coop i'm going to figure out something to get a top on it and a roof on it and then i'm also going to put a gutter system in to reclaim water for them during the summertime, that way we don't have to supply them water and it'll just be auto fed for them. Um, so we're gonna be putting in another order of chickens. Like I said, we have an over, we do not have an oversupply anymore. At one point we had like, I don't know, 25 dozen in the fridge. And now I think we have five dozen in there because so many people have figured out that free range non-GMO chicken eggs are delicious huh ladies you guys do a really good job so we're going to get some more laying hens and double the size of our coop and then so that way we have some more supply for the ladies garden 
Um, I had so much infrastructure to build last year that honestly I did not do very much with the garden. We had two beds, had some cucumbers, some watermelons. You can see the chickens have really good, done a good job of scratching that up in there. And we're gonna do some more raised boxes this year and I'll actually spend some more time in here. We wanna plant some sweet corn, we wanna plant some pumpkins for the kids and make this garden a lot nicer. So that's kind of what's going on right there. Now let's go out to the pig paddocks, show you guys what we have going on over there. And then I wanna talk about future plans on what we're doing with Irwin Family Farms because I am really, really excited about the direction where we're headed with everything. And I think it's gonna be a blast. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button because we got a long ways to go. And I'm excited to show you guys every step of the way because realistically, we're still a grassroots, ground up operation, first generation farmers. I did not grow up farming. Um, nobody in my family did. My, my parents had horses, but honestly, I didn't do anything with the horses. I was more into horsepower. I think you guys saw in the pole barn, my 1979 Cherokee Chief that I'm building. And if you guys are interested in that kind of content, that has one ton of axles, 40 inch tires. It's got a 650 horsepower LS. That thing is going to be bad to the bone and i'm super stoked about it so if you're into that kind of thing i do have another youtube channel i'll put down in the description called max overland and that is my jeep channel where we do overland trips stuff like that which we haven't done in a while but it is in the books to be able to get back out and do that but i want to do it in an old school rig something that it just mm, raw power can go anywhere you want and just go see some cool places here in michigan and then get outside of michigan but uh, that is later content. So let's talk about this pig operation and I will show you guys kind of where we started, where we ended up. And I want you guys to pay attention to how much these pigs cleared because they are like little bulldozers. All right, so this was the very first paddock, if you remember, that I put them in when they got home. They were just little piglets. I think they were uh, six to eight weeks old, something like that. They were pretty young and Right here where this brush pile is, was our training paddock. I did a single wire system for them. and Well, actually it was a double wire in the beginning and trained them inside a hard paddock with pig panels to get them used to it. And then I built their first paddock in here. And you can tell, um, you know, how much they did in here. And this is when they were little. So they did a really good job of clearing it out. They rooted it up a little bit. Not too bad because they were still little. But let me show you guys. So that's what it looked like before. You can see really overgrown, can't really walk through there. A lot of briars and just nasty stuff where you don't really wanna walk through there. And they completely cleared it, completely. So from there, we moved them over here. And you can see I still have this paddock up. I'm in process of taking these paddocks down I'll show you guys over on the other side. This was the second paddock they went in. And you can just see how much they cleared of this. Again, that was what it was before. And this was after. And they were in here for about a month and a half. Um, and it was honestly too long. Because some of these spots, you can see, like, they really disturbed the ground a lot. Especially over here in the corner. They like to bed over here. And they really tore this up. You can see how much they pushed the ground up next to the wire. So those pigs did a number on the ground. So that was the second paddock. This one was the third. <clears throat> and this is when they were big boys. You can see how much damage they did to the ground. I mean, they just got in here and tore it up. So if you have a property like we do, we're on 10 acres out here and it's all woods, start with pigs because they will clear a lot of stuff for you. And then you can go through with a back blade or a dozer or excavator with a thumb and start ripping stuff out. And also, so it is middle of winter right now. We've had a really warm spell lately but we just had 25 to 30 inches of snow on the ground. And look at these trees. I mean, it literally snapped them in half. 
the tops got so heavy that it just snapped them in half. I mean, the devastation out here, uh, it did not look like this before winter. I mean, there's just stuff everywhere. I started moving this stuff because that tree snapped off and ended up falling on one of the hutches. So I'm trying to get all this stuff out of here. And this was where their final spot was. And right in here, which I shouldn't, I should have done this video before I took all that down. I made a shoot for them so that we could get them into the trailer. And I did, unfortunately did not do a video of loading them. I should have, but I was just trying to get them out of here. So you can just see though, I mean, paddock where six healthy 300 plus pound pigs were to an untouched part of our property over here. There's barely any leaves over there. There's barely anything on the ground because they foraged and ate it all. Future plans have been decided for Irwin Family Farms. You know, when we first started this, I had no idea. Like I knew I wanted healthy food for my family and I knew I wanted healthy food um, for my friends and my immediate family that is not, you know, like my wife and kids. Um, but what has actually happened is we've gotten really passionate about providing healthy food for other people and the brand is starting to grow people are uh, starting to share word of mouth all the people that have bought the pig meat from us that was on non-gmo feed and pasture raised forest hogs basically the same thing um, they absolutely love the meat and we have a whole pig in our freezer right now and we've been so what the, the really cool part about this is all the breakfasts that we've had since we butchered those pigs about a month ago has been from bread that Whitney has made, eggs from our chickens, and bacon, sausage from our pigs. That is so satisfying to be to a point where one of our meals, we're not buying from the grocery store at all anymore. It is all home raised, all homemade, all hard work and dedication that we put in to raise that meat. Well, I wanna provide that for a lot of other people because the simple fact is the average age of the average farmer here in America is 65 years old. I'm 35 years old. That is a big age gap and there's not enough young people getting into farming. And I guess that's really why I want to fire up this YouTube channel and keep it going to share this journey of what we're doing. And I'm getting to the, the really exciting part here. So make sure you guys stay with me. Um, I want more young people to get into homesteading, to get into farming, to get into regenerative agriculture and start to bring that back so many of my age group people are wanting to start little farms start homesteading so they can feed healthy food you know and, and things even down to when COVID happened when it was hard to get stuff in the grocery store had we had this stuff it would have made things a lot nicer during that time and you never know when stuff like that is going to happen so it's nice to have canned goods you know uh stuff that you're growing on your own property you know maybe a greenhouse so you're growing vegetables all year round you're raising some of your own meat stuff like that that's kind of what i want to go over on this channel so i can help other people get into this and the proper steps to take with your townships you know because i've already gone through a lot of that we're going to do separate videos on some of that stuff but there's so much fun and so many good things that come from this and that's why I want to do this channel so that I can help other people do this. Okay, the last part of this video, I want to go over the plans for the future. So 2024 right now, middle of winter, uh, we've got some more snow on the way. So fortunately we, you know, got a splash of spring and got excited and I've been out here every single day just working on the land. I just took this paddock down. So where we're at right now, and I'm gonna pop a drone up, where we're at right now is the front part of our property. And we're going to clear off the front half of our property. My neighbor is a farmer, he has all kinds of equipment, he's got dozers and everything. Yes, I'm going to video that because I'm so stoked to see what this property looks like. We've got all of this stuff cleared off. All these trees around me right now, come next, come this spring, 2024, are going to be gone we're going to bulldoze all of these in here push them into a pile and this is going to become our pasture land up here we really want to get into raising at scale broiler chickens 
on pasture. We want to continue to raise hogs on pasture. And that is something that we really want to be able to provide for ourselves, our friends, our family, and the community. And you know, if it starts to grow online and people want it outside of here, we want to be able to start shipping stuff. So future videos to come, I'm going to be talking about um, how to get certified to sell USDA meats so that you can sell select cuts and ship them. Like all the process of doing all of that stuff because that's where we're currently headed. We're at the very ground level of that. And just show off everything that we're going to be building on this 10 acres. This is going to be ground zero of Irwin Family Farms. We're going to get our start here, get our profits up, get our income streams up, and then we'll probably um, either buy some more land down the road and put a big building on it and get more pasture ground, but this is going to be the start of it. So we're going to clear all of this out so that we can get pasture land. We're going to have to put a bunch of lime in the ground because there's nothing but pine trees out here. And if you don't know, that actually is not good for the soil. And if we want to grow a good, healthy pasture out here, we need to re pretty much rejuvenate the ground. And the chickens are going to help us do that. So 2024's goal is to get this cleared out, get the ground prepped, get a pasture in so that 2025 we can start really ramping up the broiler chicken operation so we can really start ramping up the broiler chicken operation and showing you guys how far we can go with that I'm really excited so this year I think we're gonna do 50 broilers just for our personal family because we eat a lot of chicken so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video I'm building the chicken tractor I haven't decided which chicken tractor I'm gonna go with um, I'm thinking the Joe Salatin chicken tractors is probably what I'm gonna go with so I'm gonna do a video of building that for you guys and then you know just kind of keeping you updated as we go um, with those 50 birds and then uh, we're we're gonna get some more chicks for the egg operation, do some more videos on talking about the egg operation, and then just bring you guys on this journey. I'm so excited to go on this journey, and I want you guys to come along with it. Tell me where you're from down in the comment section. I would love to know. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. There's so much more to come. We'll see you on the next one.